Old Swanner here, and that was my rendition recorded many years back of the wah-wah run, as I call it, from Sweet Child of Mine, where the wah-wah pedal kicks in, things come up a level before the wild outro. Uh, to me, it's the trickiest bit of the, the whole record to play, and uh, definitely one I've bluffed a few times in gigs and wrecked a few times in gigs. In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to chop the full two-bar lick into some more manageable bite-sized pieces. In particular, I'm making six loops we'll examine in this video. And once the loops are all individually functional, they can then be bolted together to make the whole lick. Our first loop is set up uh, to include the what I call the, the lead-in to the lick itself. This would occur in the previous bar uh, before the one beat. Uh, you can see I've put it on the screen now. Uh, the eight and the nine on the G string at the end of this bar uh, effectively stolen from before this full lick really starts the lead-in or pickup, and I've done it this way so we can loop quite nicely round and round and it's going to sound like it will sound uh, when you put it into the context of the full lick. Uh, so playing that through with my count and foot tap it'll sound like so. One, a, uh, and, a, uh, two, a, uh, and, a, uh. so on and so on. So a couple of things I spotted uh, when I was looking at the uh, original video of this, it looks to me like Slash actually bends in that direction. You'll have noticed that I was bending up rather than down. And I mean, my, my standard rule is these strings get bent in that direction, these three strings get bent in that direction. Um, but that doesn't make a lot of difference. You can do that however you want. Uh, I also think Slash is actually picking the 8 and the 9, but I've always played it as a hammer and it feels good. Uh, so I've left it like that. Now underneath the tapliture that I've drawn up, uh, you'll notice I've got a box with many spaces in it to keep track of top speed you can play this at. And to me that's absolutely key uh, with anything that proves to be even a little bit tricky on guitar. If you measure your top speed, and that means the top speed you can do it perfectly at, then you'll be able to see if you're improving at things as your ease of playing improves, your top speed goes up, assuming you're allowing or only allowing the same quality through, uh, which is where we say, what top speed can you play that at absolutely perfectly? The loop I suggest for the second loop to build towards the full lick uh, doesn't quite work as we'd like if we take it verbatim from the full lick. Um, the problem here is, let me put that on the screen, uh, if I run it as written, it's going to look like this. One, uh, and, uh, two, uh, and, uh. So you can see I finish, for me, on the fourth finger. For you, it might be the third. Uh, you can finger these however you like. But most likely, you'll want to start again using the same finger we finished with, which is a problem. Uh, to start again, I need to lift the finger, move the hand possibly, come across to the B string and start again. Which at slow speeds is doable, but as we get faster with this, it's not going to work very well at all. Uh, I recommend a twist on this, which we'll look at now. My recommended loop then uh, introduces this slight changing of how this is actually played on the record um, for practice purposes only. Having said that, it can lead you to discover some new what I'd probably call musical vocabulary or directional vocabulary, physical vocabulary, something slightly different, uh, which means that when we're learning this lick, we're possibly picking up on some other things too that can infiltrate themselves into your style. So the twist I've incorporated here is to split the bend. We'll play the plain note at the end of the bar and bend as the foot goes down. Nice strong pattern there. Foot down, bend up. That will happen in the full lick as well. Um, I'll start off by picking the bend, but as we repeat this bar, I won't be picking the bend on beat one, of course. Uh, it's going to look like this. One, a, uh, and, a, uh, two, a, uh, and, a. Uh. And now 
I've got no jump of finger, I can just loop round again with the bend. So I finished there, one, uh, and uh, two, uh, and uh, 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 one. And we want that one up to speed, of course, as well. Uh, record speed's about 125, I think. So if we can get it faster than that, great. Loop three is where we get the first slide that's in this lick. Um, there is a twist I've included here. Let me just see if I can remember. I've not got it written out. Um, where are we? The, the lick as I've got it written here, loop three. One, a, uh, and, a, uh, two, a, uh, and, a. Uh. Here's the problem. If I finish on finger two, that's what happens in the full lick. But that now leaves me with a problem because I need my, for me, finger four. For you, probably finger three. Or possibly. I need to jump from finger two here back to finger four here, which is awkward. Um, one way of preempting that, and again, including something that's possibly even a little harder than is involved in the lick itself, pushing you a bit further than you want to go, um, is to refinger. Let me replay that and I'll show you my recommended fingering. One, uh, and, uh, two, uh, and, so here, if I can bring finger four back to fret 12, rather than using finger two, I'm now in position to, uh, so to uh, and uh, at the end of the lick. To start again, I can drop back to 11. And now we loop quite seamlessly. A good example of exaggerated practice where what we're doing in our practice time is more demanding than the lick itself and that can lead to some pretty fast improvement. Make sure you measure and you'll see that. For loop four I've introduced another tweak to make things easier to cycle around and around seamlessly. Uh, I'll show you why and what I've done. Uh, playing the loop as we got it on the screen, uh, we got starting on 12, so one, uh, and, uh, two, uh, and. Now, in the lick itself, my next note would be finger three, but it's another one where I want to start again with finger four back on fret 12, which is quite awkward. Um, or if you're playing this with fingers one, two, and three, as Slash does, one, uh, and, uh, two, uh, and. You'd be finishing on finger two, most likely, uh, but then you'd want finger three here. If we omit that note completely, this is going to loop easier. And the way I tend to do an omission of a note in a situation like this is by introducing what I call a woodpecker, a pick mute. I call it a woodpecker because it's like a, a, a woodpecker's beak pecking on a tree. Uh, let me demonstrate. Uh, so the loop as I've got it written with the woodpecker, which is the circle with the cross in at the end of the bar. Um, let me include that. One, a, uh, and, a, uh, two, a, uh, and, mute. Now behind the mute, I've got all the time I need to get uh, from where I finished. Which is on finger one here. But I want to start again with finger four going where finger one is. So with the mute, I come in, I mute the string, and as I mute, I move. And then I can put the pressure on with finger four on the down foot, beat one. Let's run that a few times. One, a, uh, and, a, uh, two, a, uh, and, mute. One, a, uh, and, a, uh, two, a, uh, and, mute. And the mute, very helpful. Uh, if it's something you've never tried before, Definitely a useful thing to add to your arsenal. And if I've even got an article on the Tapliture website about woodpeckers, which I shall link up to the left. Loop five, I'm using the same idea of putting the mute at the end. And the reason for that is that taken as written in the full lick, uh, the pattern would look like this. One, uh, and, uh, two, uh, and, uh. I'm ending on the B string, but I want to start 14 on the top E string. Uh, that's a problem which we can get rid of very easily with the pick mute woodpecker once more. Uh, so let me run that as written with the woodpecker on the final semiquaver of the bar. 
it now looks like this. One, a, uh, and a, uh, two, a, uh, and a. Uh. That lets me get the fourth finger back to fret 14, ready to start again. One, a, uh, and a, uh, two, a, uh, and a. Uh. One, a, uh, and a, uh, two, a, uh, and a. Uh. So that runs quite nice and definitely recommended. Uh, this sort of twisting, uh, changing anything you like to get something that's going to work smoothly and seamlessly. Make sure to measure. We want this over 125 beats per minute. In loop six, we introduce a couple of demi semiquavers, 30 second notes, which are twice as fast as the 16th notes or semiquavers we've been playing straight through up to now really. Um, running that along with the count and the foot tap sounds like this. One, a, uh, and a, uh, two, a, uh, and a. Uh. Probably not a big deal to get that working at this sort of speed, but if you have any problems with the demi semiquavers, the 30 second notes creeping in at the end, let's just have a little look at how we can get used to playing those uh, in a fairly straightforward, step by step, systematic fashion. If there's a trick to this, it's realizing that uh, there's nothing particularly magic going on. Um, we're dealing with really what I call eggs and chickens and um, I tend to discuss those uh, very early on with students in particular when teaching them to, to just do a basic strum something like that I end up calling egg chicken me and chicken egg chicken me and chicken and if that makes no sense I'll put a link up to a, a lesson that talks you through that basic strum the eggs and the chickens, as we make music more complex, still occur. They just pass by at a faster rate. But we can generally take them back to the, the real level of simplicity, where we're really playing one note per foot movement. Um, I'll put this on the screen now. So here is the, the beat itself that's got the demi semiquavers in. But underneath it, I'll put the what I call double magnified version. So we were in 30 second notes talking about the demi semiquavers, if we magnify that to double the size so that one beat starts to fill two, we would actually move into semiquavers rather than demi semiquavers for the fast notes. But if we magnify again, double, then double again, sorry if this sounds complex, hopefully it makes sense when you see it, um, we can actually look at the problem beat in very simple eighth note terms. Uh, let's zoom in on that. So we've got the problem beat, including the demi semiquavers drawn up, and underneath I have first doubled that from 30 second notes uh, at the fastest into 16th notes at the fastest, but then doubling it again turns the 16th notes at the fastest into 8th notes at the fastest. Uh, so we're sort of just changing the scale at which we're viewing it. All that actually changes here is the foot tap, the notes and the shape of the notes, the rhythm does not change at all. Um, so when we've got it in 8th notes here we can see uh, really what we've got is, is what I'd call three eggs and a chicken uh, or three crotchets and two quavers or three quarter notes if you like and two eighth notes it sounds like this uh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and three Looking at it like that, I mean, the, the rhythm's just not especially complex. So if you have a basic grip on, on rhythm, that should be easy. As ever, I recommend running these things with the foot to really get the shape in there. What tends to happen as we play faster is we reduce the amount of foot movements, but that then relies on a stronger underlying structure to the, the shape of the notes in your head. Um, so we can get that shape there, egg, 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 chicken, but once it's into demi semiquavers at its fastest, 
um, we would only have two foot movements for this. It would still be though, egg, egg on the down foot and on the up foot, egg, chicken. So, dum, 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 da, da, dum, 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 da, da, dum, 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 egg, 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 chicken, egg, 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 chicken. And if you'd never thought about things in these terms before, it might be a bit of a revelation, uh, revelation, sorry, but uh, very, very powerful. Um, it really gets your head round the most complex of rhythms when you approach things this way. One last word on that. Uh, instead of um, maybe the count, the uh, one uh, and adder, I might call that, uh, which I'll stick on the screen now um, to let us count the demi semi quavers. I'm not sure there's an official way to count demi semi quavers, um, but I've written it as one uh, and adder, one uh, and adder. Uh, but more visual than that, we can often replace the count itself with some words that describe what's happening. Uh, so one suggestion I've put here uh, to get you used to playing this one beat in demi semi quavers is to call this as you tap your foot, pick, pull, pick, pull off, pick, pull, pick, pull off, pick, pull, pick, pull off, pick, pull, pick. Pick, pull off, pick, pull, pick, pull off, pull, pull. and they're, they're hard to say, it's a bit of a tongue twister, uh, but saying what you're doing can be quite powerful, um, for example, if you say pull, I think I just did actually in there, I think I said pull, but I wasn't pulling, I was picking, um, you become aware that you know something's not quite right, and it forces you to pay attention to that level of detail that really pays off, because it's programming your subconscious to do this stuff for you, uh, that's when things become easy, that's when the magic kicks in and what felt like a bit of a grind becomes music. With the six loops functional, it shouldn't be the biggest of deals to start bolting them together now uh, to make our next building blocks, which generally is recommended uh, a bar at a time. And to help these bars loop, again, I've used the trick of, of putting a lead in at the end. Uh, I've put a couple of woodpeckers in. Let's look at these two bars. So the, the first bar that becomes a good challenge to measure and get up to speed um, but being half the size of the full lick uh, which is two bars I would predict you can get almost exponentially faster improvement by looking at the bars individually than by ch taking on the whole challenge of the two bars together uh, it just always seems to be the case I've proven this again and again the smaller the pieces we work with the faster we can get things up to speed and uh, we're sort of approaching the full thing but it's still beneficial let's take them one bar at a time. So the first of these on the screen now is one a uh, and a uh, two a uh, and a uh, three a uh, and a uh, four. Here's my woodpecker to let me loop back to the start, and I've got the lead in that you hear on the record that takes us to the one beat of the lick at hand. So this will be my and a uh, one a uh, and a uh, two a uh, and a uh, three a uh, and a. Uh, speed and make sure it's improving. And the second of the full bars that we'll be bolting together to make the full lick looks and sounds a little like this. One a uh, and a, uh, two a uh, and a, uh, three a uh, and a, uh, four a uh, and a, uh, one a uh, and a, uh, two a uh, and a, uh, three a uh, and a, uh, four a uh, and a, uh, one a uh, and a, uh, two a uh, and a, uh, three a uh, and a. Uh, I've not really re-familiarised myself with a lot of this stuff. Uh, the last time I played this whole lick up to speed was, I think, about 2008, which is the recording I've got at the start and the end of this video. So I'm almost relearning it as I go, but um, obviously I've written these up. Uh, not familiar with them yet. I, I might take it as a challenge to get my own version back up to speed and find out how long that takes me. Finally, we can put the two full bars we just looked at. Once they're up to speed, put those two together and we'll get the full lick which I will begin on the lead-in that occurs at the bottom right of the tab on the screen. 
Uh, so one uh, and a two uh, and a three uh, and a four uh, and a one uh, and a two uh, and a three uh, and a four uh, and a one uh, and a two uh, and a three uh, and a four uh, and a and again we could put a mute in there to get us back from fret fifteen to uh, fret eight to start again. Um, but this loops pretty smoothly uh, again. And of course, in, on the record, that's going to lead off into the uh, the big bends and things like that, um, if I remember rightly. sort of thing. Um, it's been a while uh, but I've been remaking sense of this, I've enjoyed it and uh, hopefully you enjoy it too. You can download all the, uh, the tabs that we've seen in this video from the linked article up to my left and along with those you've got the measuring boxes to keep track of your top speeds. If you measure each of them, uh, in particular the six individual loops, you'll very easily see which the weak one is there's always one that stands out and a good way to approach this stuff is purely to focus on the weakest of the six loops. You'll tend to find that as you make the weakest one better, the speed of the others comes up in sympathy. Uh, but that way you're not just bashing away that you know, hoping that, that you can get this hammered into the right place in the brain. Uh, you've got a systematic approach that says, all right, here's the problem. This one's working on, this one's pulling out, breaking down smaller if necessary. Lots of ways of doing that, as the Tapliture website covers. Um, but if approached systematically, and if you continuously get improvement, eventually you, you end up uh, bringing this up to speed. Um, hit any plateaus, you generally require a different thought process. And again, the Tapliture website covers a lot of the ways that we can dig inside things to extract a bit more progress where, where it looks like there's none to be offered. Any queries about anything that's shown in this video or any questions, uh, feel free to turn up at the Tablature website in the forum there or in the comments below the associated article to this video. Uh, I'm always around, uh, it's my labour of love, so happy to field any queries, questions, comments. See you there.